Hey everyone, welcome to First Christian Church Online. My name is Jordan Hutton. I'm the worship pastor here. We are so glad that you're here with us today. It truly is going to be a great day. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about how God never lets us go. Uh, Even in our times of trouble, in our good times, God is with us. And we're going to talk about how we, too, can hold on to Him, hold on to the promises that He has for us, and truly live a life for Him worshiping him with all that we have. And here in just a moment, that's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a song together. And I want to encourage you to take part in that uh, and let those words encourage you today. Uh, As we go through the service, uh, you are welcome to uh, get to that chat, type something, let us know what's going on. If you've got a prayer request, if you just want to say, hey, I'm here, uh, we would love to know that you're here and connect with you. Uh, As always, our website, full of stuff that you need to know about, and I encourage you to go there after the service. That's scottsburg.church. There's an online connect card there. That's an awesome way for you to let us know uh, what's going on in your life and how we can be there for you. Um, We would love to connect with you. So let's take this time. um, Let's worship together. Our pastor, Matt, has a great message for us today. And uh, sit back and enjoy today's service. We love you. Take me home 
Hey guys, welcome to First Christian Church Online. I'm Pastor Matt, and uh, and I just am glad that you're here today. Last week, we started talking about um, how to worship the King. We talked about our faith and how our faith puts us into action and how that action overflows into service and, and then into worship. And we're going to continue that over the next several weeks. But today, um, I, I just have to step back on memory lane for a minute. Um, I celebrated 20 years of marriage um, to my best friend, Farah Gale. Uh, man, it's just hard to believe that it's been 20 years. And, and truthfully, it started right here. Um, we're in the one of the youth rooms upstairs uh, recording tonight. And um, 23 years ago, I first met Farah in Larry Joe DeWitt's um, college class. And we dated for three years, and then we've been married for, for um, 20 and uh, had so many great memories looking back. And uh, as I took time to look back this past week, I thought of all the people that were part of my life then and were instrumental in me becoming a Christian and introducing me to Jesus. Um, you know, one of those guys, uh, two of those guys, Aaron and Eric uh, Bannister, um, great friends, and I'm here with Lizenby and Kendra, and we, we, they were in the youth group then, and man, just so many great memories. Um, but this is one of those times in my life where I wasn't a Christian, I didn't grow up in church, and so I didn't really know what it meant um, to sing or to, to praise God, to, to worship um, through singing. And uh, Aaron was one of the first people to really help me understand that and to watch him and to to see how he did it. And um, I'll never forget one of the songs. We, we sang it uh, in service uh, this week, but um, it was called Jesus Lover of My Soul. And it reminds me, I, I think it reminds me of my life. And at that time, 23 years ago, um, it just meant a lot, a lot. And so let me just read to you a few of the lyrics. Jesus, lover of my soul, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You've set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. I love you. I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. And re-singing that song and, and re-listening to that, um, it, it just means a lot to me because maybe because of that last line, I will worship you until the very end. He's my savior. He's my friend. Um, when my world fell apart, and there's been times over the last 20 years looking back where we had difficult seasons. There's been other times when we had great seasons. And if I could sum it up um, over this past week, as I looked back on all those memories, um, it was really the message um, that I want to share with you today. It's really just about my heart. And I think David's heart was in a similar place when he wrote Psalm 145. Um, when you and I um, come to this place and we prepare our hearts and we prepare our minds and we we lean in close to God and we learn more about him. Um, when we go to church and when we study and when we have small groups, when we eat with others and pray with others, when life's up and life's down, when we go through all of those things, there has to be this moment where we come back to a place of remembering God's goodness and God's greatness. And in that place of remembering God's goodness and greatness, this sense of, I'm going to praise you forever. I'm never going to let you go. I'm never going to turn away from you. Um, that's really the place that I'm in right now, 20 years uh, into my marriage with my wife. I love her more than ever. Um, things are looking up. We're in a good place in our life, and uh, God's been great. God's been good. And and I can focus on the negatives of those 20 years, or I could focus on what God has done and it's easier to look back, isn't it? I mean, for you, just think about it. Just real quickly, 
if you looked back over the last 20 years of your life or 40 years of your life, it's probably easier now to see God working then. It's really hard to see God working in the moment sometimes. But if we'll take time to remember, take time to look back and praise God for all that he's done, I think we'll come to the place that David was in. David wrote Psalm 145, and this Psalm 145 is a praise psalm. It's a psalm written as a song to be praised to God. It talks about how good God is, how great he is, and it gives us an insight of his character and what he's about and what he does and what he's going to do. Matter of fact, this Hebrew poem that David wrote is an acrostic Each verse begins with the successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. David didn't do that by accident. He did it on purpose. And acrostics are given to us so that we'll remember them. And now you and I probably won't really remember this Psalm 145 like a Hebrew would, like a Jew would, because we don't have to share the same alphabet. But for them, it was a way to remember, a way to look back and see God's greatness and his goodness. And so today, uh, if you have your Bible with you, open it up uh, to Psalm 145. Walter Bergerman, uh, one of the best scholars on the Psalms, he said this, the Psalms mostly do not emerge out of situations of equilibrium, meaning situations where everything's good, where everything's okay, where everything's balanced, and, and life is just good. The Psalms don't really come from those times. He said, rather, people are driven to such deep prayer and song as are found in the Psalms by experiences of dislocation and relocation. Now you have to think, for the Hebrew people, people who were pulled out of their land, sent into exile twice, They experienced relocation. They experienced this dislocation of their culture. They were literally plucked out of their homes and sent to a foreign land. They were literally plucked from God and sent to a land of foreign gods. And in this time, this this overwhelming sense of, of who God was and is, David tries to help the people remember. He says, Walter says, excuse me, it is these experiences of being overwhelmed, nearly destroyed, and surprisingly given life through that, that empower the people, us, to pray and sing with the heart of worship. For David, this Psalm 145 is a very personal song. It's a David's way of showing the world just who God is. And I think we can learn from this today. If you and I will take the time to look back and remember, remember the goodness of God, the greatness of God, we will begin to be able to tell God's story to this generation, to the next generation. That was David's hope. So if you have your Bible, let's get right into it. And we're just going to work our way through Psalm 145 today. It starts verse 1. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. David begins by portraying God as a king, focusing on God as a worthy ruler. It's here that we see David's faith come alive. As David begins to unpack his experience with God, we begin to see his heart for worship. God is a good king. And David begins by saying that that God wants to to be here with us forever and ever. And because of that, David will praise him every day. God's reputation, David wants his reputation to increase. He wants God to be known uh, by all the people, the people of his kingdom and the people of other kingdoms. So he begins this idea of of God being king, a good king, a worthy king. And because of that, he goes into verse 3, and it says, Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. There's some really cool things in that just one verse. 
He is most worthy of praise. God is worthy of our praise. We don't have to fake it. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to um, try to build up to it. God's worthy. And when we think about what God has done, if we, when we read about in Acts, when we read about in the Gospels, in the Old Testament, in the prophets, we see God at work. And we see that he is worthy of our praise. And that's what David is trying to communicate. Matter of fact, he goes on and he says, no one, no one can measure his greatness. Now, if we'll just stop for a minute and think about this one line, no one can measure his greatness. This simple verse helps us understand the depth of God. It helps us understand um, how, how great God is. And it helps us to understand that we will not be able to comprehend all of what God has planned for us. It's just too big for us to grasp. Paul said it this way, Ephesians chapter 3. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or even think. God wants to accomplish infinitely more in our lives than we could possibly even think about. Now, if you just stop for a minute and, and let that soak in, God has a plan for us so great that we just can't even fathom it. We can't wrap our heads around what God has planned for us. That's how great he is. And so Paul says, because of that, Glory to him in the church and Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. God gets the glory. God gets our worship. Well, this thought is echoed further in Psalm 145. Look at verse 4. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Verse 6. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will pro proclaim your greatness. Verse 7, everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. The first thing that pops out to me is this. When we share God's story with other people, it's worship. When James says, you have faith, good, but what about your deeds? What about these good deeds? Faith without good deeds is dead. It's useless. One of those things that we can do, one of those deeds that you and I can do is exactly what David tells us to do. Share the story of his wonderful goodness. This past week, did you take time to share with anyone the goodness of God? I know that I've been able to share just because of some things that happened in my life here the last couple of weeks. When people ask me, hey, how's such and such going? I'm able to share with them how great God is and, and how faithful he's been just by through my own experience. Have you taken time to really think about what God's doing in your life so that you can be able to share his story? That's what David tells us to do. He says, we will sing with joy because of your righteousness. When we worship, do we sing with joy? Or are we so focused on the world around us and our own circumstances that we just don't have a heart of joy? Not everybody likes to sing. That's okay. But we can worship with joy. We can share with other people a sense of joy. And I know people. There's some people in my life that just, are not joyful people. It's just, it's hard to talk to them sometimes. And the way that our system is right now, the way our culture is right now, we need a little bit more joy. We need to be telling people about God's goodness. David says, I will meditate, verse five, backing up, I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor. David sees every generation telling God's story. That that passage that we just read, if you bump up to verse four, he says, I let he says, Let every generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power 
And because of that, because of that telling of God's story, David says, I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and all your wonderful miracles. For David, it wasn't a question whether we need to be telling God's story. It was fact. Part of worship, part of having this faith in God, part of following God and being obedient to him for David was telling God's story. Remember, you know, remembering God's glorious acts, his awe-inspiring deeds. For David, everyone will share this story. For David, he was part of his worship. This idea of looking back and remembering is a big part. And again, I'll ask you, you know, have you taken time to look back and, and not just look at what God's doing right now or what you're going through right now or what you think God's not doing right now. But take time to look back and see what God has already done and what he did for you then. And, and maybe if you're out there and, and you feel lost, you feel like you're far from God and you've been close to him before, maybe you just need to take time and, and look back and remember. Now, this looking back didn't cause David to be paralyzed. It didn't paralyze David in the moment. Matter of fact, this looking back propelled him to move forward. This looking back actually helped David look ahead. And I think it shows in this psalm. Um, when I look back over the last 20 years of my marriage, I don't want to just stay in that 20-year span. I don't want to just sit here today and go, oh, man, that was great 20 years, and oh, we had some ups and downs, and oh, look what God's done. But looking back propels me to be excited about the next 20 or the next 20. And so looking back actually helps me move forward. Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9, David writes, the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. David in his worship, in writing this psalm, cannot help but tell us about who God is. And I think that's an important thing about telling your story. In telling your story, you're not just talking about yourself and the things that you've done or you've accomplished with God's help. By telling your story, you're actually, hopefully, should be, telling the things of God, of who God is. God's faithful. God's compassionate. God did this for me 10 years ago. He brought me out. He's a God. Of, he's the provider. So by telling God's story to other people, we're actually telling other people about God. And, and so our faith is put to action, and through that action, we're able to worship. Let's look at verse 8 and 9 really quick. It says, The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. This, this unfailing love, this phrase, um, it, it really comes out of Exodus 34, verse 6. Exodus 34, the Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. God says to Moses, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. This is a very important part of this psalm. It, it begins to paint the picture of why God is worthy. David's already said God's worthy. David's already said we should tell every generation of all of his miracles, all of his goodness. But now we know why. Now we know why God is worthy. There's a word here that I don't want us to, to move on from very quickly. It's the phrase, the word, unfailing love. It's the Hebrew word, chesed. It's found all throughout the Psalms. Chesed is the word that describes and defines God's covenant with his people. It's, it's actually his covenantal love. God loves us because he promised he would. It's part of the covenant. It's part of what God said he would do. It's God's nature. 
God doesn't just love us willy-nilly. God deeply loves us. And that love never fails. That's the word chesed. God's nature is not wrapped up in just his commandments in the covenant. But God's love flows out from his commandments into our lives. And so we see God's un, um, unfailing love. We see his faithfulness. And so that faith in that, that belief in that, that understanding, that trust in that propels us into do, doing his commandments, living by his ways. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. It's simply who God is. God's unfailing love is critical for us to understand his worth. His love doesn't change. His love doesn't change because we messed up. His love doesn't change because we're away from his covenant. It's part of who he is. Now it's on us to make sure that we are living faithfully with him. It goes on. David says, verse 10, All of your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. Notice, you can underline, faithful followers. When we are faithfully following God, the overflow should be praise because we see God at work. David says that these people, they will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. Again, this idea of praise and worship, telling God's story. Every time we sing a song, every time we pray, every time we take communion, we are telling, we are proclaiming God's story. We will be the people who tell about your mighty deeds, about the majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is everlasting. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. Don't just read that. Don't just look at that and go on. Let that soak in for just a minute. Look, look at it. I'm going to read it um, from the ESV. Verses 12 uh, and following, or 11 and following. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Part of our worship, part of our faith is telling people again about God's kingdom. Are you telling people about God's kingdom? I hope you are. It challenges me to do more of it in everyday conversations, in everyday moments. God is loving. His unfailing love is part of who he is. The other word here um, comes from the word faithful. We see this play out over these last verses. God is faithful. This word is chased, chased and chased. Chesed, chesed, right? Um, these are where the two come together. And, and God is faithful to those who live in accordance to God's covenant love. God's going to keep his promises. God is faithful. His love never fails. The question is, will you and I live up to that? Will you and I have a heart for God? God's love will never fail. God will continue to act with power and grace. The question becomes, will we remain faithful to him? For David, as he writes this psalm, as he sings this song, he is proclaiming his love and devotion back to God by telling others of how God is. For David, this is reason to celebrate. This is a reason to sing, to praise. And so he keeps going. Again, he tells more of God's story, of who God is. The Lord helps the fallen. He lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hungry and thirst, and thirst of every living thing. Can you just take a moment? 
right now to just let that sink in? I mean, this is a true praise. This is a true praise song of who God is. I, I hope you know that this is the God who loves you. The Lord helps the fallen. Are you fallen today? Are you, are you broken today? David would tell us that the Lord helps you, and I, I would tell you that the Lord helps you. The eyes of all look to you in hope. What are you looking to today? What are you turning to today? It says, when you open your hand, God, you satisfy the hungry and the thirst of every living thing. God is there. I may not see him right now. That's why we need to take time to look back and remember. Verse 15, I love that verse. He really describes David's hopeful trust. He trusts God, but it's more than just trust. It's a trust that is firm, is solid, based upon what has already happened in David's life. And even in the midst of what's maybe ahead of David, he trusts, hopefully trusts, that God will continue to provide because God's already provided. He begins to conclude this psalm. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. Verse 17, he's filled with kindness. Again, David continues to tell us who God is. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know if you're dealing with something heavy or if life is great. But David reminds us, the Lord is close to you. When you call to him, when you reach out to him, when you lean in close to him, God doesn't run away. God draws near. God protects us when we love him. God grants the desires of those who fear him. When we have this obedient fear, when we have this trust, when we have this hope, when God is our number one, God provides for us. He grants us the desires of our heart. David sings about the attitude we should have before God. And this whole psalm, this whole psalm points us back to who God really is. And in a world that's so divided, in a world that's hurting, in a world that is literally dying, every day, we should have the attitude that goes beyond those divisions. We should have an attitude that goes beyond those hurts and those divides. We should have the hurt that goes beyond what the world is telling us. That attitude is an attitude of worship. You see, David ends this psalm. He says, I will praise the Lord. And may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. David is making a declaration. One I hope you'll make today. He says, I'm not really concerned about what everybody else is doing. I'm not concerned about what everybody else thinks. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise the Lord. And you want to know why? Well, let me tell you why. He grants the desires of those who fear him. The Lord is close to all who call upon him. The Lord helps the fallen. When he opens his hand, it satisfies us. His unfailing love is true. He, he is the good king. David writes for 20 verses about who God is. And he says, I will praise him. And may everyone on earth bless his holy name. May you praise him today. There's simply nothing that we need to do more than to take a pause today and commit to praising God. Maybe you don't know what to praise. Maybe you don't know what to do. So I invite you to look back, to think about all that God has already done. 
Walter Bergman concluded this. is in a book called Praying the Psalms. And he says, To pray these psalms means to stay as long as these poems do at the raw edge of life when a living God who will not let us settle easily or for too long. Let me read that again. To pray these psalms, literally to, to believe them and to pray them and to sing them, means to stay as long as these poems do at the raw edge of life with a living God who will not let us settle easily or settle too long. When we look back and see what God's doing, maybe you're having a difficult time. Maybe you're in the midst of a tragedy. Maybe you're full of anxiety. Maybe you're worried about COVID again. And numbers keep increasing. And depending on what channel you watch, you're going to either freak out one way or the other. But let's not look at what is happening right now. Well, let's take a moment and do as David did. Let's be on the raw edge of life. This raw edge of emotion. Because God is not going to let us settle. He's not just going to let us set here. God's desire, God's heart is for you and I to tell other people, every generation, about God's story about who he is, what he's done, and David has done this. I guess that's why I love the song so much, Jesus, lover of my soul. Before I loved him, he loved me. And because I know that, because I know what I've been through, because I know what God's brought me through, there's this deep sense of worship in me that just overflows and it says, I'll never let you go. I love you. I need you. Even if my world falls apart, even if the next 20 years of my marriage isn't like the first 20, I'll never let you go. Why? Because you're my savior. You're my closest friend. And because of that, I will worship you until the very end. I have here beside me. Um, I don't know. Eric, are we good on here, bud? Um, this is a, a clock that a friend of mine from Ohio gave me when I left. And it just says, making memories by the hour. And uh, Rick created this for me, and every picture on this clock is a different um, moment that I shared um, with some dear friends for 10 years of my life. Farron and I shared a lot of these moments together, but some of these moments were, were just me and some dudes and <laughs> some families and and I can feel the emotion. When I look at these, I, I, I remember those days. I remember the baptisms. I remember the, the fun on the Lexington trip where I about wrecked my truck and we ate this thing called a Vulcan or something. It was this huge Mexican dish. Um, mission trips, softball games, beast feasts, they're all here. And, and I keep that in my office because I never want to forget. I never want to forget what God did through me and through those around me. And so this week, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Take some time to look around at what God's doing. Take some time to a few moments and speak directly to your father and praise him for it. 
Look around what God's doing. Look back on what God's done. Praise his mighty works, as David would say. Sing about them. Celebrate with someone else. Tell someone else about God's faithfulness and his unfailing love. There's nothing more that you can do as a person of faith than to share God's story with them. Take some time this week, number two, to write out something that God has affirmed in your life. How has God been gracious to you and compassionate to you? How has God been slow to anger, as David says? How has God been full of love, as David says? And take some time to praise him for that. Number three, take some time this week and pray for the needy, the proud, the lost. Pray for your own heart. Really take some time to just pause and look back. Looking back will help you and I move forward. And that's really what worship is all about. Remembering God. Remembering what God has done and moving us forward. That's what Jesus said. Here in just a moment, we're going to give you some time to take communion. But remember what he said. Every time you do this, remember me. Remember what I've done. And proclaim that until the day I return. I'll never let you go. You're my savior, you're my friend. No matter what happens, I will never let you go. I will praise you in every generation till the end of my day. So let's take some time to remember and then to tell others God's story. I hope you'll do that. If you need somebody to talk to, we're here. Your chat host is there. If you have a prayer request, we'd love for you to let us know how we can be praying for you. Let us go into this time of communion, remembering all that God has done and being ready to share that with someone else this week. Have a great week. See you next time. Hey, it was great to be with you today. I hope that something um, that you heard today was encouraging to you, uplifting to you. And uh, we want you to know that we'd love to help you take your next step in following Jesus. Um, so whatever that looks like for you, we're here for you. And you can uh, leave a comment there in that chat, or you can go over to our website at skysburg.church, fill out that online connect card, um, and we'll be right there with you to walk with you. Uh, we're here today uh, at church. And uh, here in our worship center and know that we would love uh, to meet you in person sometime. We've got services every Sunday at 8.30, 10 and 11.30 right here in this room. Um, and it would be a great privilege to worship alongside of you here in person. So uh, you're welcome to be here with us one day. But thanks for joining us online. Uh, we love you. We can't wait to see you back next week. Have a great day and a great week.